right, boys and girls, this is the part of the service where I have a message for the moms and dads and for you. So I'm going to ask you, can you take your hands right now, boys and girls, put them together. We're going to pray and ask Jesus to help us with this time, all right? It's going to be awesome. And I promise there will be stories for you in this as we look at the golden rule. So let's put our hands together, close our eyes, and end our mouths, and let's pray right now. Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you have taught us how to love one another and to love the world. But not only have you taught us that, Jesus, you have loved us. And so as we seek to live by the golden rule that you've given to us, I pray, God, that you would give us grace to do this well. Speak to us. Give us ears to hear in Jesus' name. And all God's people prayed. Amen. 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 Well, we will be looking at the golden rule this morning. If you're new to Manoa Community Church, we've been going verse by verse through the gospel according to Luke. Now, Luke has a sermon called the Sermon on the Plain, and Jesus gives us the golden rule. In a moment, we're going to look at that one as well as Matthew's version, and we'll stay in Matthew this morning. But I want to start with a story. How many of you have seen the movie Aladdin? Raise your hand. All right, put your hands down. Aladdin ends up in prison. So he's in a dungeon, locked up, and Abu's trying to get him out. And all of a sudden, an old man who is, he's actually Jafar, is in the corner. And he wants to get Aladdin out to go after the lamp in the cave. But he tricks him and shows him all sorts of jewels and gems and says, we can go and I can get the princess to fall in love with you. And he put this on the screen. He says, you know the golden rule. You've heard of the golden rule, haven't you? Whoever has the gold makes the rules. Is that the golden rule, boys and girls? No. You can pull that down. Whoever has the gold gets to make the rules. In that movie, now we don't believe in magic lamps that have genies, but follow me here. We always play this game, man, if I could have any number of wishes, what would I want? And the movie plays off of this as well. I want all power, lots of wealth, infinite wishes, right? We want to think of all the things we want for ourselves. But this movie has a powerful story that I'll bring back at the end where he goes on a hunt for wishes and ultimately his whole life is turned upside down. Well, the golden rule turns our lives upside down as well because we always want to think of ourselves typically first. But Jesus says that's not the way God's kingdom, that's not the way Christians should live. We're supposed to think about other people first. And so in Luke's gospel, let's put it up on the screen. I want all the kids, this is from the NIV version, to repeat after me and adults. You guys ready? Let's do this. One, two, three. Do to others. Do to others. All right, let's do it. I'll do it, then you repeat. You ready? And then we'll, all right. Do to others. Do to As you would have them. Do to you. All right, let's put it all together. You ready? Do it with me now. One, two, three. Do to others as you would have them do to you. All right, let's give the kids a round of applause for that. If you don't remember anything, these are the words of Jesus. Never forget them. Now, I want to put up Matthew's version, which is where we'll be for the rest of the sermon today. I will read this to you. You don't have to read it back to me. But listen up, all right? So in everything... Do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. And I've called today's sermon, This Rule is Gold. And we're going to have four points, and each point starts with one of the letters gold. So put them up on the screen. What makes the golden rule so golden? First, this rule is gold because it is a G, a great sum. We'll look at what it means that it's a great sum. It's O, it's others focused. It's L, it's love in action. And it's D, it displays Jesus. So that'll help you remember and you can take some notes, kids, if you'd like to. But moms and dads, I recommend it as well. So let's say first, this rule is gold because it's a great sum. Now, this sounds complicated, but follow me here, kids. How many of you know how to do math? Raise your hand. Because one plus one is? Two plus two is? All right, good. Teachers are doing good. Homeschoolers are doing good. Awesome. Go, go to our first point, and I want to show and reread the verse from Matthew. He says, 
do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Now, who remembers what a sum is? It's, I just gave it away. It's, it adds it all up, right? One plus one, the sum of that is two. Well, when Jesus gives his sermon, it's called the Sermon on the Mount. He ends it here and he says, this is what all of the Bible is about. Now, the law and the prophets is like the Old Testament before Jesus showed up. And Jesus comes preaching the Bible. And they say, how do we make sense of what's the most important things to God? They said, what are the greatest commands, right? What's the great command? He says, there's not one, there's two. Love God and love your neighbor. But then he collapses it even more. And he says, how do I love my neighbor? How do I fulfill this great command? I do it by applying this rule. To do to them as I would want them to do to me. This adds it all together. Now, boys and girls, you know the Bible's a big book, don't you? Moms and dads, you know? And sometimes when we read the Old Testament and all the rules like the Ten Commandments, we can start to get confused how to live through all of God's commandments perfectly. In fact, there are over, let me find my slip of paper here, there are 613 laws and rules in the Old Testament. Did you know that? And sometimes it gets complicated. How do I make this all work? How do I follow God? And which of these rules still apply? Because none of all of them do. We're not going to go and sacrifice animals anymore. Jesus died for us, so we, that's done, right? But Jesus gives us the formula to make the complicated simple. And I'm a simple man. I need simple formulas because I am not a genius. I want a picture of a, put a picture of a kid up here who was a child prodigy. His name was Terry Tao. And at the age of seven, he was able to do calculus. How many of my seven-year-olds in the room? Raise your hand. <laughs> a few of you. By the age of nine, he was doing university-level math. And by the age of 12, he won a gold at the math Olympiad. He could add complicated things all together and get the right answer. But most of us are not prodigies, right? And we're not even Bible scholars, though. I went to seminary, and I'm learning more and more week after week, year after year. But listen, boys and girls and moms and dads, here's the key thing. Jesus said that if you sum up the whole Old Testament and all of God's laws and all of the commands, they all sum up in this rule. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Which means... You have the cheat sheet and the answer at the end of the test. <laughs> you have the number. Have you ever had a trouble doing the problem and then you get the answer and you work backwards to figure it out, right? We have the answer. And if you do the math and you come up with the different answer, you are wrong and Jesus is right, amen? All of it points to this great command of how we love others. And so this rule is gold because it is the grand sum Jesus has given us the answer. Let's go to the next point. This rule is gold because it's others focus. Say the word other with me. One, two, three. Other. I want to put the verse back up. He says, in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the whole Bible. Now, it sounds so simple, but it really is so hard. Now, it's hard not because we don't understand what Jesus is telling us, but because of our sin and our selfishness, we like to think of ourselves first, right? When we think of three wishes, we're not normally saying all the things we want other people to have. I want them to have more power. I want them to... We're thinking of ourselves. But that is why this rule is so golden. Because it gets to the heart of the problem in human beings and helps us turn our hearts the right direction towards God and others. Now, I have four kids at home. They're getting a little bit older. But I've noticed a pattern, and maybe you have as well, that sometimes sharing things like, I don't know, your favorite toy is difficult, Right? Giving it away to others. I've noticed that if I cut the pie different slices, different sizes, 
that I have a tripping fest over who wants the biggest piece. Have you ever noticed that? Sometimes we want the best seat. I want a shotgun. I want the best seat. And what I want to challenge you, boys and girls, and moms and dads, is whatever seat you would want, why don't you give that to somebody else? What about the biggest piece? Why don't you leave that for your friend instead of for yourself? Because when you do, you're starting to put God's word into action in your life. Remember in Finding Nemo, do you guys remember the seagulls? The seagulls, we laugh at them, but they actually represent ourselves so much. Put up the picture of the seagulls. Remember that? Mine, 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 mine. They're all going after the crab. Mine, mine. When the crab defends himself, plops down like, ma. It's funny because it's true. But when we see that, here's what I want to challenge you, boys and girls and moms and dads and everywhere in between. When the mind kicks into your heart, say, what do I want for myself? Let me give it to others. Because that's what Jesus calls us as Christians to do, to become more like him. Now, I want to share one encouraging story. How many of you were at Vacation Bible School last summer? Raise your hand. All right, about half the kids in the room. Every year at Vacation Bible School, you children raise money for children around the world or those in need. And this last year, I was so proud of you all because we were raising money for Mercy Kids Africa, for vulnerable children in Africa um, to help them with education, to help them with nutrition. And last summer, you guys raised, wait for it, children raised in one week, five days, $1,510.50. Can we congratulate the kids for that? It was the best offering we've ever had from our children in one week, that I think in this church's entire history. But you know what made me so proud, both as a father and as a pastor, is how excited and happy you were to give your money away to help other people. I just thought that is how we are always supposed to live. Because when we want more, 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 did you notice the more you want, the less happy it makes you? And we never grow out of that the older we get. And so I want you to remember, and if you didn't do it last year, get ready this year to start saving your nickels, your dimes, and your quarters. Kids were looking under their couch seats. They were doing extra chores for their moms and dads. Anything they could do to raise more money for that offering. And I want to speak this over the whole church, and I'm going to talk more to Bill about it. But what if we found a way to do that year-round with our children? Amen? And for our adults as well, because Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. May the seagull heart of the mind, mind, mind be turned off through the power of Jesus. Amen? (laughs) That we would be thinking about you, you, you. You. This rule is gold because it's others focused. Let's go to our third point and then we'll wrap up with Jesus at the end. It's love in action. This rule is gold because it's love in action. Let me put it up on the screen again. It says, do to others as you would have them do to you. Now here's the big word. I want you to repeat it after I say it. The big word is do. You ready? One, two, three. Do. All right, let's try that. That was pretty weak. You ready? On the count of three, kids, I want you and parents to say the word do. One, two, three. Do. Excellent. Do. Thank you. All right, you don't have to do it the next time. Do to others. So it's others focused. But here's the key thing. It's something that's called to action. Earlier we said the great command is to love your neighbor. In Luke's gospel, this is in the Sermon on the Plain where he says to love your enemy. Wow. Christians are called to radical love. If you doubt it, parents, listen to last week's sermon because we hit it hard. We're called to love, but not just feel love, right? Like I feel a loving feeling for people. I'm called to do love. 
to do unto others as I would have them do to us. Now, did you know that most other world religions and great sages have a version of the golden rule? They do. So lots of other people, including rabbis before Jesus, talked about this principle. But here's what makes Jesus' rule so much more precious than all the other principles. You ready? All of the other versions I shared this last week were about what you weren't supposed to do. Follow me. They said, if you don't want someone to do it to you, don't do it to them. A hundred percent of the times they said, if you don't want it, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. When Jesus came into the world, he said, that is not good enough. It's not good enough just to be passive and say, I won't do that to you because I won't want it done to me. He says, no, I want you to think harder. What do you want done to you? Go and do it now. It's active. It is love in action. We as believers are called to take our faith and to take this love that God has given us and take it to the world. Now, I found a fun story of a child who was four years old that was struck by this. His name is Austin Perrine. He's from Birmingham, Alabama. And he felt called to share and show God's love. I want you to watch this quick video, kids and parents. It's powerful. Legend says he put the fast in fast food, and scientists have argued that he contains the heart of a lion. He also has the power to put a smile on every face he comes in contact with. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. It's President Austin down here. By day, Austin P. Ryan looks like the average four-year-old, but about once a week, an astounding transformation occurs. He's a superhero with a mission to change the world. My superpower is to feed the homeless and make them smile. Don't forget to show love. Thank you. You're welcome. Don't forget to show love. My son told me that he wanted to give up his toys that I bought him every Friday to go feed the homeless. It's just the right thing to do. When I grow up, I want to be president of the United States of America. And my two jobs are feeding the homeless and chasing the bad guys out of school. I don't have a weakness, and Superman ain't got nothing on me. A little rain can't stop love, can it? No. Because love is what? Undefeated. That's right. You're welcome. My name's Don't Kyle, forget man. to show love. That's so awesome, dude. Thank you so much. Austin will be eligible to run for president in the 2052 election. Until then, have hope, be kind, and... Don't forget to show love. Oh. Out of the mouth of babes, amen? Children... So many cool things have been started in the world because of a child's faith and desire to show love. And if you have that in your heart, the love of God now, never grow out of it. But I want to challenge all of us. What does it look like to put our love into action? Maybe you're not called to go and feed the homeless, but maybe you're called to donate clothes or serve at a soup kitchen. Maybe you're called to, to love the kid at the bus that has nobody sitting next to them saying, I wouldn't want to sit alone. Let me go sit next to them. What does it look like to put feet on your love? Love in action. Don't forget to show love. Because this rule is gold. It's not just what we don't do. It's only what we do. Do unto others. Let's wrap up with this fourth and final point. It's not only a great sum. It's not only others focus. It's not only love and action, but it displays Jesus Christ. I want to put another scripture up. This is how Jesus starts the Sermon on the Mount. He says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have not come to abolish them 
but to fulfill them. Now follow me here, boys and girls and moms and dads. Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7 7 are the greatest sermon Jesus has ever preached called the Sermon on the Mount. And he starts a sermon saying, I have not come to abolish the Old Testament and the Bible. No, I've come to fulfill them. And then he ends and says, and this is what they all add up to, this golden rule. Which means that Jesus not only calls the world to do the golden rule, Jesus came to fulfill it himself. Amen? And that's exactly what Jesus has done for you and for me. He came with all wealth and he came and made himself poor for you. He came to heal those who were hurting. He came to the outcasts to welcome them in. He came to those who were sick and he healed them. He came to those who were left out and he adopted them into his family. Jesus is the golden rule. And he's applied it for your benefit and for mine. Because Jesus on the cross died the death that he didn't deserve to give you life. Because that's what you need. Jesus thought about you on the cross. He pours out his love for you even now. Boys and girls and moms and dads and everybody, let's stand as we wrap up this sermon. The movie of Aladdin, bring the drums down just a tad, (laughs) one for a second. The movie Aladdin, do you guys remember how it ends? At the very end, Aladdin has a third and final wish. And throughout the whole movie, he's been thinking about himself and what he could get. And at the very end, something changes in his heart. And his third and final wish was to set the genie free. We don't believe in genius. We don't believe in lamps. But when we see that, we see something beautiful that reflects the heart of God, don't we? Because he has all power. He can do anything. And he uses that power to set you free. And now he's given you that divine power so that you would set other people free as well. That when you think about what you pray for, could we stop just praying for what we want? We should ask for our daily bread. We should pray for the bread of others. Amen? We should be praying about what the world needs and directing that divine power to them because the Father hears our prayers. But He cares about where our prayers go. We are called to be men and women, boys and girls, that don't forget about love and do love to the entire world because that is what God in Christ has done for you. Amen? May we... Do unto others, let's repeat it one more time. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. One more time. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. One last time. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you for the glory of God. Because this rule is gold. Amen. Let's worship him together, children and parents now.